Uh, the Bible substantiates the fact that he is the king of kings and that he also is the Lord of lords. Revelation 19 and uh, it is verse 14. The Bible says that he's going to be coming with armies of heaven and Follow him upon white horses as the bride, Jesus Christ, clothed in fine linen, clean and white. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nation. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. Amen. Right now, God is letting things kind of just have his way kind of kind of as long as it don't violate cross what his ultimate plan is but uh he's he's going to smite the nation uh with uh the rod of iron that's the word of god the rod of iron is god's word in other words god's word really don't bend God's words don't bend it's, you know people thinking that they are bending the word of god but god's word don't be in it just the time is not where uh it it is such as it was on the day god said if you, if you pick up a stick on the sabbath you were going to die that was up under the law and uh, if you picked the stick up on the sabbath you did something on the sabbath you were gone because you're violating the law of god well the rod is going to be stretched back out again in the thousand year reign and uh god is going to uh, rule this nation with a rod. Amen. With a rod. And ain't nobody getting by. Amen. Ain't no tipping by. It's just the word of God is going to be stretched out and judgment is going to be executed speedily. Speedily. Now, judgment still, even though he, uh, Ecclesiastes 8, 12 says, because judgment against an evil work is not executed speedily. Uh, that must be verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed, how? Speedily. Uh, therefore, the heart of the son of men are set to do evil continually. It's fully set. See, because it ain't done right then. But uh, in the uh, near future, when, when, when the... Uh, churches in restoration and in restored, and then throughout the thousand years, judgment is going to be executed speedily, just like it was under there. You did you if you you done that up under the uh, picked up a stick on the Sabbath, and he told him do nothing. He going you 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 in trouble, amen. And uh, but uh, uh, then he goes on and says here that's that was my. May he fall showing that he's going to rule with the rod of iron. That means the word of God is going to be stretched out without any, uh, without any uh, uh, leniency. And he, and he threaded the wine press of the fierceness and the wrath of the, the almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise God. So uh, showing you that he's going to be a ruler over every king on the earth. He is now. They just don't know it. He is now. See, that's what I'm saying. He, what he is, he is now. But because he just as soon as one raised up above him, he don't smite him like Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, see, Nebuchadnezzar, he sent him a dream trying to get his attention one time. To let him know that the reason you got all what you got is because of me. But he thought it was because of what he had done. So God sent him a little dream. A little, he texted him, if you will, and, and threw a dream and said, look, uh, this is what's going on. And he missed it. He didn't, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. He didn't get the memo. And so finally, uh, God calls him to... Uh, uh, eat grass like an ox, grow uh, claws like an eagle, 
and hair like an ox, and got up under the dew of heaven. Here go a king living in a palace, amen, getting his nails manicured and uh, everything being uh, uh, done for him, uh, taken care of. And all of a sudden, for a period of time, he loses his mind. He goes to the crazy house. But when his senses return, the Bible says that he said, now nah, I never chanel. I extol. And, uh, and he don't use the word magnify, but he used another word there. Uh, he used the word extol, but he used another word that I want. I praise and extol. Yes. Amen. He said praise and extol. Uh, uh, and honor the king of heaven. All whose works are true. And his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he's able to abase. See, he, he God let him go on for a while, but he, he was telling him, don't go there. This is what's going on. And he finally uh, was uh, checked by God. And then when he came back to himself, like some people, they when they get checked, some die and go on with ignorance, but some get checked and come back and begin to be able to praise God and, and, and recognize who he is. Anyway, they recognize that he's the king of kings. He's king over everything. Right. Every king. He's Lord over everything. everything. Praise God. He's king of kings and Lord of lords. Now, for us who, who uh, have some understanding of that, we ought to be extolling him, praising and extolling him right now. Amen. Praise God. We ought not to be uh, waiting for something like that to happen. Amen. We shouldn't be waiting on that because he, we should know that he's king of king and that he's, that he's Lord of Lord. Praise God. We, we should have that understanding. Uh, there's a, a scriptures uh, where uh, it's just, I had it in my mind here. He makes a Statement, King of, uh, praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. But nevertheless, you got away from me here. Uh, He's, he's, uh, he's Lord, he's ruler, he's pre, uh, premier over everything uh, in this earth. And we that uh, have that understanding today ought to be extolling him and giving him what is already due uh, to his name. Right. Uh, I've, I've, I've been in the, uh, on the other side, which most folks have, because we're born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Uh, but when you come over here, you begin to see the, how God rules in the kingdom of men. That's it. You begin to see how he rules in your life. And uh, you want to allow his place. He gonna, every knee going to bow and every tongue is going to confess That's it. that he's Lord to the glory of God. Every, every knee, Paul says that to the Philippian church, that every knee is going to bow. And that every tongue is going to confess the second chapter and uh, verse uh, 10. He says the, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should uh, confess uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, to the glory of God the Father. 
That's one passage that says every knee sh shall bow. All every knee shall bow. They didn't say it should. See that 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 uh, uh, that shall bow is just as that should is uh, uh, just as strong as the should. The should is just as strong as the shell there. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, but you got to have that revelation of that. That every knee uh, shall bow. As Isaiah uh, What is it? Do it say shall bow? Yeah. Isaiah 45, 43. Yes, and I swore by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. See, see, uh, see the, that should, as I said in Philippians, is just, is just as strong as that shall because that's already prophesied that that's what is going to happen. Should is kind of like kind of giving you an opportunity to do it kind of like on a a, a willful or a a, a willing, willingness. But that shell there is 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 it's gonna happen. Every knee. That's right. Every knee is gonna bow, every tongue is gonna to confess to uh the Lord that he's that he's Lord. He's Lord uh, to the glory of God the Father. So I'm I'm thankful tonight that I'm already confessing that. I'm already in confession to that of His greatness, His might, that He's uh, a ruler, uh, that He's the the Lord. That, uh, many folk gonna say did not do this here, but He's gonna say I don't even know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Here we got a chance to for him to say, "Yes, I know you, yes. Yes. Amen. I know who you is. You you yes. did bow. You did submit. You yes. did find your place in the family family of God." Wow. And so, I'm thankful uh, for that opportunity. Book of Revelation, the uh, 21st chapter. There's a. Let's start with verse 1. I saw a new heaven and new earth. John is seeing a, uh, through the eyes of the Lord a new heaven and a new earth. We see that today. We see that through these scriptures that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. That's a new place of worship. Uh, the moon and the stars and all that stuff ain't going to be nothing no different. But this heaven here, we're living in a, and we're sitting to, tonight in a heavenly place in Christ. But that's going to be new heavens yes, and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. In other words, everything, amen, that's uh, from third heaven all the way down, everything is going to uh, uh, be in God. Everything, new heaven, new earth, wherein uh, dwelleth going to dwell righteousness. And he says, in the first earth, which is what's existing now, the outer court, carnal, uh, carnality, were passed away. The, uh, and there was no more sea, the ungodly. All that's going to be gone. Won't exist any longer. All what we see now, all the killing, all the murder, all the drugging, and all the pedophile, all the immorality, all the homosexuality, all the uncleanliness today. Yeah. It's going to be done away with. It's going to be, it's going to be no more C. That C represent Isaiah 57, 20, 20, last verse there, uh, I think it is. He said, uh, verse 20. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, which when it cannot rest, 
whose water casts up mine and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, to the wicked. In other words, that seed, that troubled seed. Yeah? That's why John saw at one place a sea of glass. It wasn't no rough seed. John saw it in Revelation, a sea of glass. That means there's peace. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Those overcomers, those people that's living in peace, they're, they're not in turmoil. Tomos. They're in peace. And uh, <coughs> 20, 21 to 1. And the second verse said, I, John, saw the holy city. Praise God. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. John saw this holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God. So it must have went up. See, that's that overcoming church that went up. John see it coming back down. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. It's beautiful. She dressed out. Revelation 19 and 7 says, uh, Rejoice and be glad for the marriage of the Lamb is coming. His wife has made herself ready. Yes, sir. And it was grand enough to her to be arrayed in fine white linen. Mm -hmm. the fine white linen uh, was the righteousness of the saints. So here this church is coming back down, prepared. This church is full of, uh, of beauty, clean. Uh, and he heard a voice from heaven, out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Let me show you who that is in, in, in 2 Corinthians uh, 6 and I think it's 17. It says that, uh, wherefore, come out from among them and... Uh, be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Praise God. See this tabernacle? See the third verse? He says in the latter verse, and they shall be his people, and God uh, himself shall be with them, and be their God. That means these people done did what? that have came out from among them. These was those that came out from amongst them and were separate. Yes, Amen. This, this, this tabernacle here is not full of anything. This tabernacle here that come back from which that first go up, but we talking about it because he saw them coming down. Uh, they have came out. They have made themselves ready. They have not touched the unclean thing. They came back away from everything that's unclean and they was ready to go up and also ready to come back and, and, and be a part of what the city of God. Verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Oh, God. You know what the wage of sin is, right? So what's going to be gone then? If the wages of sin is death, and there won't be no more death, there won't be no more sin. There won't be no more sin. Because that's going to be done away with. All right? And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. All the stuff is gone. Really, I won't even know who didn't make it. You know, if I find out who didn't make it, some of my loved ones didn't make it, that'd, hurt, that'd be hurtful. Yes. God, won't even, that God is not even going to expose that. Yes. Or remember those things. The former things have passed away. Yes. Yeah. No more crying. It's all that kind of stuff. All kind of sorrow right now. All kind of pain. Because of life. And things we put ourselves through and things we yes. be found in. Life right. affords us tears and death, and so forth. Verse 5 says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. 
And he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. You can put it, you can take it to the bank. Amen. Praise God. Amen. To the cash. God said that these things, what I'm saying here, this is what people don't really believe. They don't believe God means what he said because of what I said earlier, because God doesn't do and judge speedily and uh, quickly. So they say, I'm all right. And then some hard is just hard and I don't care. Well, that's all right too. Amen. Sixth verse says, he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega. I started, I'm the finisher. The beginning, the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. So you got to have a thirst for this here. And like every one of us, we didn't have it from the beginning. God created a thirst. He created a hunger. He created a thirst. And, and we begin to go after that. That that drank. Yeah. Praise God. That that thirst quench. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, God done that for us. Yeah. He says, and uh, everyone that has that kind of thirst, he's going to let us drink from this fountain freely. Mm -hmm. yeah. He that overcome yeah. shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. Yeah. And he shall be. My son. See, that's the same thing he says in Revelation 3 and 20. He says, uh, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him uh, and will sup with him and he with me. Yeah. He says, To him that overcometh, to him that overcometh. This is who he's talking to, the overcomers. Overcome. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne. This is Jesus saying this here. As I overcame. Didn't he have to overcome? Yeah. See, people, they didn't have to, but he had to overcome. It said right here, he says, I overcame. Yeah. I went through every aspect of life. Yeah. I was faced with the same things that you were faced with. Uh, I overcame. Amen. I overcame. Uh, he, he, he overcame. Uh, Hebrews 4 and 15 says, he says, we not have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, our weaknesses, but was at all point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So he was tempted. He was tried. All the things that we try with, you can find it in Matthews 4 and 1. We let out into the wilderness and put those things in front of him, but he he resisted them all. Amen. He resisted them. He, 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 was, we, he withstood them. That didn't mean, that means that he did not allow them to have dominion over him. Amen. We don't have to let them have dominion. We let it have dominion. We don't have to. You know, I've let things have dominion over me. I didn't have to. I let it. I gave it permission to do that. You have to give your you have to give things permission to defeat you. They can't defeat you unless you give it permission to defeat you. Because you're more than a conqueror through him that loves you. Yeah. But you have to give it permission to do that. And uh he says uh uh back there <clears throat> he says uh if he overcome, he's going to get a chance to, verse 7, he that overcome shall inherit all things. Praise God. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. In other words, the Bible said that we're heirs of God, and what? Amen. Join heirs with Jesus Christ. In other words, the, the world is his. He will give us possession of this world as well to be able to rule and reign with him and enjoy this, uh, the benefits of this life freely. And then verse 8 is interesting verse. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and the whoremonger and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. Amen. Any lie 
shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is an interesting verse. You notice all the things here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight things here. And we know the abominable and the murderer's bad and the, the sorcerer, the witchcraft worker, amen, the soothsayer, the magician, and all that is, is bad stuff. And uh, the idolater here, uh, worship of idols or images, you know, and uh, then he said, all liars. I saw it. I mean, different come out. It wasn't a little white lie. I don't care what, what kind of lie it was. <laughs> you better get rid of all of them. Amen. You better get rid of all of them because he said, all of them. See, see, and, and, and this is what we got to believe. He, he means this here. He means this here. Not just. He just, this ain't just written on a page to be written. That's right. I mean, you got to stop the line. That's it. Acting a lie. What? All liars. Any way you, any way is any shape, form, or fashion of a lie, you got to stop it. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? And, uh, but then he, I, my, here what was interesting is that he put before all these, look like, because like in, in uh, the commandments, he, he starts right now, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not uh, 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 commit a fornication, and so on. Here he says here that won't get in the city is the fearful and the, uh, and the unbelieving. And now, uh, as I said, this, 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 this fearful here is really representing, or not representing, but it's showing Cowards. Timid. Cowards. Hmm? Uh, faithless. Fearful. You know, they timid. They coward. See, see God, is, 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 God can't use cowards. Can't use cowards. He know a coward to turn on him. He needs somebody that got their mind made up and they don't have no fear. It's like here in, uh, 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 well, this is a scripture in Deuteronomy 20 and verse, uh, uh, I'll use this one. In verse 8, uh, I don't want to know, I, I, just let me go to Judges, because what that happens, if I get that, i got to start explaining. Uh, uh, go further, and I'm going to stay longer, and then I don't stay here tonight. Look in Judges, let's use this one. Judges in seven by Gideon. Then Jeru Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moray uh, in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into your hand. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. So God was saying, I can't give you this here because you got too many. And if I give you the victory right now, what you will say is that the reason you, you got this victory because you have a Ph.D., you had two of them, in fact. You had a master. You was real smart. He was telling them, you got too many. And so it, God wouldn't be credited for it. The host that I had that he had with him was the reason they won the battle. Are you following? He says, uh, now therefore go to and proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whosoever is Fearful and afraid. Now, now notice now they're getting ready to go into what? They're getting ready to go into battle. Now remember the people you ain't gonna find in the city, the first one is they're fearful. They're fearful. They're cowards. When they come up with some tough assignment, they're gone. 
Whoso is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount e uh, Gilead. And there return of the people 20 and 2,000. And there remain 10,000. <laughs> See? <laughs> God says, if you, if you, if you have way gone, out of 32,000, 22 disappeared. You don't want to go. I don't want to go no battle. You think you got that big arm? You think you got some backing? And <laughs> and when the battle gets in the ray, you ain't got you 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 miss a twenty two thousand folks. God just told him go ahead and go. But the point here is showing you that that was twenty two thousand folk fearful and afraid. They 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 was not trusting. They didn't have confidence in, in, in God. It was cowards. And uh, and then and then he says, uh, and there remain ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, and the people are yet too many, bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, shall the, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, were 300 men. But the rest of the people bowed down unto their knees to drink water. Other ones doing this here. Hmm? They went down there just... Yeah, you... You don't want nobody with the head that you want people to watch and pray. <laughs> you don't want to watch and pray. You know, keep eye on what's going on. Yeah. Uh, even even though the ones that brought the hand to the mouth, did they still get on their knees? To get the water, or did they just bow down straight down? Uh, he said that everyone that left, I, I didn't. He didn't show. It didn't. Likewise, everyone that bowed the knees drink. No, he didn't say that they did. Let's see, did they? And the number of them that put it their hands to their mouth were three hundred, but the rest of the people bowed down their knees. No, I guess they didn't. Yes, they must have bowed over and, and and did it. So it don't say that they did. So I can't say they did. Okay. Amen. But the point there that they wasn't noticeable. Uh, uh, and it could have. I think they could have. But that wasn't, the, I don't think that was the point in <coughs> they were paying attention. You know, you're lapping water, you're putting your hands to your mouth, that means you're paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. And other ones just, you know, down there with the head. Okay. Amen. Okay. Yes. I heard uh, about a month ago on radio, I never listened to Christian music or nothing on radio, and this person was reading this passage, and what they gave on it was, I thought it was really good, and it ties in, mm -hmm. and she was telling me, they were telling this of uh, the 300, God does not require much when he puts much in his Amen. chosen. Amen. Praise I'm God. So yeah. In other words, God gets, with little, God does much. And as he said here, he wanted them to see that it wasn't because of their power, their might. It was because of what God does, right. what God was doing, right. you see. Right. But he don't want cowards. That's right. This is what I'm, this is the, the main point I'm trying to stress here. These people that get in, he said the fearful, see, he, he don't, he didn't go with the, with the whoremongers and the, uh, the, uh, immoral, the immoral uh, first. He put that coward person first. They won't get into the city. See? 
You, when you're a coward, you, you're afraid to trust God and what he said. Absolutely. When you're a coward. See, you're going in and and you and you and 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 then we got this we got this other instance of course we just mentioned one uh, a few days ago in numbers where uh God was dealing with the with Israel uh when he told them to go over to the land 13 chapter numbers right. amen and uh they was uh talking about how how many uh folk was over there and the giants that was in the land. Even though God had already told them that he had given them the land and they was to go in and put and to possess it. Amen. Uh 1317. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto him, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land that what it is and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be uh, that dwell uh, that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So when so they went up and searched the land, searched the land from the wilderness of Zen unto Reho, as men come uh, to Hamoth, and they ascended by the south and came to Hebron, where uh, Hymen and uh, Shei and Telemai and children of Annex were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Ishkol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bared it between uh, two, two uh, be, uh, bared it between two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and other figs. My God, that was some big grace, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of lot of lot of spirit there, you know. They they bared them between two to, in the staff, and they brought them uh, the pomegranate. They placed the place was called the brook of Ishkol because of the cluster. Uh, of great which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And, and they returned from searching out the land after 40 days. Judgment, a number of judgment. And went up to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel and unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him that, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey, and it is the fruit of it. Here's the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. They gave a, they, they already be given to give a fearful report. Are you following me? He said they be, they be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled. Very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak. Amalekites dwelt in the land in the south, and Hittite, Jebusite, Amorite dwelt in the mountain. Canaanites dwelt by the sea and the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stealed the people before Moses and said, let's go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Yeah. There was somebody in the crowd that wasn't fearful. Yes. We know he got in, don't we? Oh, yeah. He got in. Yeah. Him and Joshua got in, because yeah. they wasn't fearful. Yes. Uh, Wait till the microphone. I'm sorry. You said it was big grapes and they were What is, what, what, it, what, uh, <laughs> the grapes, they had big cluster of grapes, yes. So what does that represent? Spirit? Uh, what well, grape represents spirit? Yes, but, but that had, that but yes. Go ahead. What's your point? I had a dream that I had big old it was fruit and they were so big. I mean they was really big and I was going side to side. Ooh, I'm just, I'm just grabbing the fruit right. and put them in buckets. So I had the dreams like I got back to church. They used to be strawberry about this big, but it was big. Right, All the fruit was big. So 
Amen. Amen. That That's what it represents. Fruit that represents the spirit, the spirit of God, the good things of God. Okay. Yes. Amen. Amen. The fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temper, and so forth. And so they had a big bunch of them. Representing that where they was at, it was good stuff there. Amen. You ought to be able to carry some away from here with you when you leave here. Uh, saying that the land you're in has some good stuff in it. And, and there shouldn't be no fear and and unbelieving and coward that's going on because of the fruit that's in the land. Praise God. What God has already said. And then it goes on and tells them they begin to give all the things how they look like a grasshopper in their sight. See, these, times, these folks can get into the kingdom. They, 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 didn't, they didn't make it in. Outside the kingdom was the fearful. Just try to Give you a little there. You can uh, go back and look at it. But my point trying to be made here is that uh, fearful don't get in. That's right. Amen. Uh, Matthew 8, 26, Jesus asked in one place, why are you such a coward? 8, 26, he said unto them, why are you fearful, O ye a little faith? Mm -hmm. Amen. He told you to go to the other side. Why are you such a coward? That's what he's saying to him. Hmm? Why are you so timid? Didn't I tell you to go over? <clears throat> See, these are the kind of people who won't get in because they'll keep backing up from what God has said do. They'll keep back. I can't do it. But the people that uh, is courageous that have Caleb and Joshua mentality. They have gone into the promised land. Praise God. They'll, they'll go in and, 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 and apprehend what uh, God says uh, is theirs. Amen. It's ours. Isn't he good? He, 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 this is ours that he has promised us that is ours to, to have. But these, it's, it, it pointed out that right there from the beginning, he says, the fearful, and then he says, the unbeliever. Now, the unbeliever, of course, is people who is lack of faith. Faithless suit, unbelieving. They don't believe God. They don't trust God. They, they won't rely on God. They're scared to uh, step out on God and, and hold on to the promise of God and see God uh, uh, cause them to walk on whatever the condition is. That's right. Hallelujah. Because we're all going to be faced with waves and storms going to rise up. We just got to be able to get courage and faith in God, belief in God. Amen. Romans 14 and 23 said, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. He said, he that doubted the damn if he eat, because he eat is not of faith. When we do things, we don't have no faith in it. Amen. It, 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 we're damned already. Because we, we do it without faith. For whosoever is not, for whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. It's sin. If it ain't of faith, it's sin. If it's unbelief, it's sin. We got to do things, amen, and believing that what God said he'll do. That's why I tell people when you, when, and I've said it here many times, when you step out on God's word, you're not stepping out on nothing. You said, you stepping out on something that's solid. Yeah. It got foundations on yeah. it. Praise God. It got structure. It got, it got something that you can lay your life down on. Praise the Lord. Every aspect. Not some of it, all of it. But when you're a coward and when you're unbelieving, then you have a problem trusting that, what God says. Then here in Titus, the, the first chapter of Titus, 
Bible says in the 15th verse, unto the pure. What? All things are pure. But unto them that are defiled, they are <laughs> tannic. That word defiled means tannic. See, we can get tannic with so much sin and get tannic with tainted with so much stuff. Yeah, taint. So it's like a wall in the mud, ain't it kind of? Uh huh. So, so it can be to defile. To defile, okay. All right. To tan could contaminate. Yes. That's why you gotta you gotta make sure you stay out of stuff that contaminates. Yes. Right. You can get so soiled and so defiled. Right. Your conscience. He's talking about here. We talking about you. We talking about your conscience. Mm -hmm. You can get messed up. That you just be unbelieving. You can't you 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 can't receive the good things of God. Yes, sir. He says unto them that are, <clears throat> but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving ain't, is nothing pure. The word of God is pure. Oh, yeah. That's Psalm one nineteen, uh, verse nine. No. Converting the soul. Word of pure. Converting the oh, soul. Oh, 19. 19. I said what 19? 19. The fear of the Lord. Thank you. Yeah. 19. Look, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Yeah. Uh, but that's... Uh, Pure, there it is. Uh, the statutes of the laws are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure. Yeah. The commandments of the Lord is pure. Doing what to the eyes? <laughs> the commandments of God are pure, and it enlightens our understanding. Yeah, thank God. Lightens our eyes. But when you defile and contaminate it, and uh, assault it, you, you, you can't see that. You know, that's why you got to stay away from unbelievers. That's right. People that's sowing negative. That's right. You got to stay away from that kind of stuff. It'll get on you. Yep. Yeah, you rub up on something. Get up on, just get up on, a, get up on a dirty car, you get dirt on you. Yep. That's right. Get your stuff soiled. That's true. You know, you rub up. When you're rubbing up with folk, you get messed up. But even their mind, see there, and their conscience is defiled. Even the mind and their conscience is defiled. So I thought that was interesting back in Revelation 21 and 8, the unbelieving, the fearful and unbelieving. God puts them... Uh, at the head of the list, over the abominable, the murderers, the hormones, the sorcerers, the idolatry, and all the liars. And you know all that's bad. Huh, all that's bad. <laughs> but when you're a coward, you won't trust him. God is getting an army today to trust him. Praise God. You give some believers today that will believe. Yeah. That is that's full of courage. Courage. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Got to get into that kind of relationship with God. And know that we're serving that God. So I'm thankful to uh, tonight. Thank God to the overcomers who get in, be overcoming these areas and uh, getting rid of all fear and 
getting rid of all the unbelieving. Amen. And then, of course, all the other, other things, immoral, uh, uh, relationship, getting rid of those things, putting them behind us and getting a hold to this here. Amen. This should be worth everything we pay. This should be worth everything we pay. Praise God. And the cleaner you get, the more you see God do some stuff for you. That's right. I'm telling you what I know. Telling you what I know. Amen. This ain't David said it to somebody. This is what I know now for myself. The cleaner you walk with God, the more you see God do things and open avenues and doors for you. The more you get determined to do what God wants, the more you're going to see God do things. You just find God. Everywhere you look, you find God. Everywhere you look, you find God. God will be at your at your your disposal. Amen. Because He wants to do things for you. That's right. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. 27 Psalms. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Even uh, when the wicked, even my enemy. And my foe will come upon me to eat of my flesh and stumble and fail. And though a host should encamp against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in a time of trouble, he shall hide in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide. He shall set me upon a rock. Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemy round about. Therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou say, seek ye my faith, my heart says unto thee, thy faith, Lord, will I seek. When God calls, you get right on what you want, Lord. I, you go right after him. Amen. He said, hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemy. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemy. For false witness are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I did what? Unless I had believed. I would have fainted if I hadn't had faith and confidence in him to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen our heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Praise God. I'm thankful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Would you explain verse 10 a little bit? I don't quite Verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Was basically what it's saying is when the, that family. relationship there, father, father and mother is your birth. Well, that's what I was meaning. Was that your literal parents? Yes. He's talking literal here. He's just showing you if that uh, literal mother or father forsake you, mm -hmm. the Lord will lift you up. Yes. 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 He, yeah. That's. You know, if they forsake you, then you got another father. Yeah, man, that's, that's literal. He, he's literal. But he's showing you the emphasis of the closeness of God to us. If that happens, the Lord will lift you up. In other words, you won't be forsaken, you know. Uh, uh, Moses' mother didn't throw, her, throw him away purposefully. But then God lifted him up. Lift him right up out of that water. And gave him back to his mom. Amen. Amen. Hey, you can you can't, you can That's the sovereignty of God. Amen. And so that's why it's such an importance to stay close and stay hold to, to God. Because when uh, 
Somebody close to you forsake you. Don't you don't don't just remember God has it. You never had nobody close to you forsake you? Yes. Just remember, and remember how bad you felt about that? Yes. But the closer you get to the Lord, you recognize God didn't forsake you. Yes. Life ain't over with. Yes. Amen. There's something else going on. Something, something else still happening. This is not the last word. Praise God. That's what you got to come to. You got to give everything to God. But our confidence in, in, in the Lord. So. I appreciate it. All right. Lord bless you tonight. And uh, glad to have uh, Shana, her husband, here. Back in from, thank you, from Texas. Amen. By the way, I've been Harbor. Amen. Denton Harbor. Uh, birthplace, right? Amen. Well, glad for being here. With a, and then it came back with a, a, a little bitty one too. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, so we glad for uh, them being together and getting together and we trust they be together until death do them part. Amen. And then uh, raise that, what's the boy? In the fear and admonition of God. Yes, sir. Amen. It's a good place to raise them up in the church. Yes, sir. Praise God.